in the problem statement from Gate Physics 2020 reads as follows. The input voltage to the circuit shown in the figure 2 is 2 cos 100T, the unit is volts. The output voltage V out is 2 cos 100T minus pi by 2 volts. So that's a phase shift of 90 degrees. If R equal to 1 kilo ohms, the value of capacitor C in microfarads is and the four options are given 0 0.11, 10 and 100. Now, before solving uh, questions related to op-amp, we just ask ourselves a few questions. So first, is the op-amp ideal? Now, let's see the question. Now, the question is, uh, the question does not say anything about the ideality of op-amp. If nothing is said, assume it to be ideal. This, this is a very safe assumption. The question has to be explicit that it's non-ideal, then only we take it to be non-ideal. Now, second, is there any feedback in this circuit? Let's see. So what does feedback mean? When the output, a part of output is fed to the input. So the output is here V out. And yes, the output is being fed to the input. You can see that the output is connected and this is the feedback circuit that we have. So yes, so we do have a feedback. Now, the next question is what kind of feedback? So there are two kinds of feedback as we, as we understood, positive and negative. So the output node is connected to the inverting terminal. Hence, we can say this is a negative feedback. Now, since it's an ideal op-amp, so we can assume that the input current here would be zero for both the terminals. Now, uh, we'll see an interesting phenomena here. So let's uh, we remember that there is an R in here in non-ideality. So I'll write an, an Ohm's law across this R in. So I can write V plus minus V minus equal to R in times I. Now note that we are assuming that no current is flowing into the op-amp. So I can simply write V plus minus V minus equal to zero. Usually R in is a very high uh, like some mega ohms or something. So we can say V plus equal to V minus. Now this condition is called virtual short. Why short? Because V plus and V minus, the two input terminals have the same potential, hence short. Why virtual? Because they, they are not actually shorted by a wire. No, they're not. It's just the peculiarity of op-amp, ideal op-amp is such that, that they're shorted, but only virtually. It appears as if they have been shorted. And we denote it by using a dotted line between these two nodes. Okay, now with this knowledge, so what I'll do is that I'll just short them, virtually short them, sorry. Okay, uh, I've just uh, written the expression, uh, I've just redrawn the circuit and written some values here, which were given. So uh, rather than writing uh, 100 T over and over, I just put uh, replaced it with the variable omega, which is 100 radians per second, right? So now, uh, so let's assume that the voltage here is Vx. So naturally voltage here will also be Vx. Okay. Now, uh, so let's, let's just see since the current entering here would be zero and similarly current entering here would be zero. And let's assume that the current I1 flows through this arm and the current I2 flows through this arm. Now, since no current is flowing is going to flow into the op-amp. So all the current that is flowing through this resistor has to flow through this resistor in order to respect the Kirchhoff's current law, I1. Similarly, all the current that's flowing through this resistor, since none of the current can go here into the, into the op-amp, so all the current has to flow through this capacitor, I2. Okay. Now, so uh, now we are going to write the KVL expressions or the Ohm's law, whatever you may prefer, for these uh, for the for the top half as well as the bottom half. Okay, so let's let's do that. Let's do that. So I'll write Ohm's law across. Let's call this R one for the sake of simplicity, and remember that R one. So I'll write this R one equal to R2, equal to R, equal to 1 kilo ohm. So let's uh, Ohm's law across R1. So I can simply say V in, the voltage drop is V in minus Vx. That's a voltage drop. Current flowing is I1, I1 times R1. This gives me I1 as 
v in minus v x over r one. Right. And now let's write Ohm's law. Uh, let's assume this resistor to be r three Ohm's law across r three. So I can again write v x minus v out. That's the voltage drop across r three. V x minus v out is equal to the current flowing is through I three is R three is I one sorry and the resistor value is R three, so this will give me I one equal to V X minus V out over R three. Now, comparing these two results, both are I one, so I can simply write V in minus V X over R one equal to V X. Minus V out over R three. Now note that R one and R three are both R, which is one kilo ohm, so they get cancelled out, and I'll simply get two V X equal to. So I take V X this side and V in plus V out. Okay, and so from this I get V X equal V X equal to V in plus V out divided by two. So this is the this is one expression that we have obtained. Now uh, let's let, let's now look at the bottom half of the circuit. So I'll apply Ohm's law across the resistor R two. Ohm's law across R two. I can simply say V in minus V x. Is equal to I two times R two. This gives me expression for I two as V in minus V x over R two. Uh, I can I can just put the value of uh, uh, V x here, and I'll get V in minus V in plus V out divided by two over R two. Uh, so I will get V in minus V out divided by two R two. Let's say this is the expression two. Now, uh, now let's look at the expression across the capacitor. So we know that uh, the current passing through a capacitor can be written as I equal to C. dv over dt now so the current passing through this capacitor is i2 c now the v is the potential drop so the potential drop here is vx minus 0 over dt i can simply say dvx over dt now um i know the expression for vx which is this so i'll put the expression here So this is d v in plus v out by two. So d by dt of this value, which comes out to be c by two d by dt of v in plus v out. Now let's let's put the value of v in and v out here. So v in uh, is two cos omega t. So that's d by dt of Two cos omega t, and this can be simplified as two sine omega t. Why? Because cos a minus b is cos a cos b plus sine a sine b. So this will be two sine omega t. Now simplifying this, two gets cancelled, so it will be minus omega c sine omega t minus. Cos omega t. I have just differentiated. So the differential of cos is uh, cos omega t will be minus sine omega t times omega. I have taken minus omega common. Similarly, the differential of sine omega t is omega times cos omega t. I have taken omega common. So this is the value of I two that we get. And let's say this is expression three. Now two must be equal to three because both are the expression for I two. So I'll write that now that. Two is equal to three. So let's do that. So V in minus V out. Now V in we know is two cos omega t minus two sine omega t 
डिवाइड बाई टू आर टू इज इक्वल टू माइनस ओमेगा सी साइन ओमेगा टी माइनस कॉस ओमेगा टी टू गैट्स कैंसल सो वी गैट कॉस ओमेगा टी माइनस साइन ओमेगा टी इक्वल टू दिस विल बी माइनस ओमेगा आर टू सी साइन ओमेगा टी माइनस कॉस ओमेगा टी नाउ नोट दैट दिस टिग्नोमेट्रिक टर्म्स आर सेम ऑन बोथ साइड सो दे गेट कैंसल्ड एंड द नेगेटिव साइन ऑल्सो गेट्स कंपनसेटेड सो वी गेट सी इक्वल टू वन बाय ओमेगा आर टू नाउ आई सिंपली पैक इन द वैल्यूज ओमेगा इज हंड्रेड आर टू वॉज वन किलो ओम्स सो दिस विल टर्न आउट टू बी टेन माइक्रो फैरड so the value of capacitance that we have obtained is 10 micro farad that's all thank you for listening